Hi, I'm Liz Robertson. I'm the pastoral care worker at Greek for Baptist Church. And I want to share with you today some things that I believe I've been hearing uh, God say to me over the last few uh, days. Um, there was a, a time when I was praying uh, and spending time with God, and I believe I heard him say quite distinctly, do not confine me, do not confine me. And it was a, a very strong um, statement. I looked up the word confine so I could grasp fully what uh, God was wanting to convey. And the definition that I found said to keep or restrict someone or something within certain limits. And I believe as I thought about what God had said, I believe that God would say that whilst we hold on to um, old understandings of who he is and what he will and will not do, what he can and cannot do. Um, he is confined within our level of expectancy. And I think he would ask uh, us as his body on earth, as his church, to raise our level of expectancy. Don't confine him to our own experience of what he has done in the past, because there is more to come. And uh, whilst we confine him, that um, what all he wants to do is then restricted and limited. So I thought today we would look at some scriptures that hopefully will give us a fresh understanding of God, who he is, all his capabilities, and indeed what we are capable of because we are in Christ. So in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, chap uh, verse 3 and 4, in the um, New Living Translation, it says this, All praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. In the Passion Translation, of that end of verse four, without fault is translated as, where's it gone? unstained innocence. We have in Christ unstained innocence. Salvation is ours. We are free in Christ. And sometimes I think when we go off the rails a little bit and we lose our way, we feel that we have to do something again to um, get back on track with God. But we didn't have to do anything or earn our salvation and we don't have to earn our forgiveness. We just turn back to him as we did in the first place when we were saved. Like the story of the prodigal son, all he needed to do was decide to come back home, return to the father. And before he said anything, the father had been looking for him and he ran to him and embraced the son. We don't have to find a way to get back into good, uh, God's good books. We were never out of them. Once we are uh, saved and we want him in our life, we have that promise of forgiveness and we have an unstained innocence. In chapter two of Ephesians, we learn more about our standing in Christ. Chapter 2, verses 4 to 6. In the Passion Translation. But God still loved us with such great love. He is so rich in compassion and mercy even when we were dead and doomed in our many sins, he united us into the very life of Christ. 
and saved us by his wonderful grace. He raised us up with Christ, the exalted one, and we ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm. For we are now co-seated as one with Christ. And the footnote in the Passion Translation explains that to be placed or seated in heaven means we have been given the perfection and authority to be there. And I think that's what God wants us to grasp afresh, that we have his God-given authority, that we are in Christ, that this is ours to grasp. It's almost as though he has given us a whole wardrobe of clothes with authority that we are not wearing. And he would encourage us to put those clothes on and to know the authority that we have in Christ. As I thought about this and I read uh, Galatians 2.20 and I saw it in a completely different light. It was opened up to me. Galatians 2.20 in the New Living Translation, and it's a very familiar verse, says, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, I always understood Galatians 2.20 um, it is no longer I that live, but Christ, as referring to the struggles that we have, um, as the Bible calls it, in the flesh, to live a good life, to um, maintain a good living, that now we have Christ within us. He helps us in that struggle with temptation. And that's true, but I don't think it's the whole picture. The other half, then, if you like, of that picture of Christ living in us is that all the attributes of Christ, all we see in Christ, are now in us. We have that authority, that story of calming the storm on the, on the sea when Christ was in the boat with them and they woke him up because the disciples were panicking because the waves were so high and the wind was blowing and they, they thought they were going to die. And they woke him up and then after he calmed the storm, peace be still, he asked them, where was your faith? And the inference being that they could have done that. They could have calmed the storm. They had that authority. We carry Christ in us. We have that authority. And I think this is what God is wanting his church to recognise afresh. What was won for us on the cross? Yes, we can look and think, oh, well, that's beyond me. That's, uh, that's, uh, I'm not deserving of that. Well, none of us are. That's not the point. The point is, it is there. It has been won for us to take on, to wear, if you like, and to move and live in that authority and see what God will do in and through us. I would encourage you today to spend time looking at scripture, perhaps the verses that I've quoted today, and spend time with God asking him to help you understand, to take on board, to absorb all that he has for us, all that is there for us in Christ. A quote from Bill Johnson. What you give attention to grows. What you give attention to grows. I would encourage you today to give attention to all that we have in and through Christ. Allow the Holy Spirit 
to minister to you today. Allow God in. Don't confine him. Ask him to expand your horizons. Give attention to God today. And all that he promises, who we are in Christ, and see what God can grow in you. God bless you.